and gentlemen, here to commence this afternoon, or rather this morning's proceedings, please join me to welcome Assistant Resident Representative of the United Nations Development Programme, Enche Asfazam Kasvani, to deliver his welcome remarks. A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I'm supposed to give you the opening remarks for today, uh, but I think instead of um, reading speech, very dry, you know, methodology. So what I, what I would like to do, I think it would be best for me to show you some slides on global perspectives, what's going on on uh, um, globally in UN, for instance, and what we are trying to eventually achieve at the end of the day. All right, you, you probably noticed all these small boxes, isn't it? So you can see some numbers there. So those actually, uh, the, um, uh, we, we call it S SDG boxes, Sustainable Development Goal boxes. So you will be seeing all uh, this logo from time to time. You have seen that during the, uh, during the uh, video presentation early in the morning. So I would uh, then uh, try to elaborate this a little bit more detail and uh, what Malaysia has been trying to commit uh, by 2030 and uh, and finally conclude by saying what has been uh, what is the status of uh, SDG 7 sustainable development goal number seven access to energy all right okay uh, first of all let me introduce about myself I am Asfazam Kasbani uh, you can call me Asfa I see some familiar faces. Uh, um, I'm from the United Nations Development Program, UNDP Malaysia Country Office. Uh, we've been helping the government uh, in many areas, many dimensions. We've been here for the past uh, 47 years, 48 years, long time, you know, in various, uh, in various um, ministries. Uh, but lately, I would say for the past 15 years, we have been uh, um, quite active in terms of uh, supporting uh, environment and energy costs in Malaysia. Uh, we've been, uh, as we probably recall, 10 or 12 years back, we've been supporting uh, Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water. At, at the time, they call it Ministry of Energy, uh, 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 KTAK, uh, Kementerian Tenaga AI and Komunikasi. We've been supporting them on Malaysian Industrial Energy Efficiency Improvement Project, a biomass power generation project, uh, and then um, followed by the uh, building integrated solar photo photovoltaic, and um, and um, and now is the uh, the uh, uh, building sector energy efficiency project with uh, public works department or JKR. Uh, all right, uh, we are entering our seventh uh, country program here in Malaysia from 2016 to 2020. Um, we basically we look into two pillars. One is on inclusive growth and development, which we look into issues related to B40, you know, uh, bottom 40% of this uh, income in this country, as well as special uh, equality or special equality. Uh, how we want to how we want to balance in terms of uh, uh, development between uh, Sabah and Sarawak and Peninsula Malaysia, that kind of things. Uh, also looking into subnational level states as well as the local authorities. Yeah? And the other pillar is actually we are looking into sustainable, uh, sustainable, resilient, sustainable and resilient de uh, de development, where uh, pretty much on issues related to climate change as well as biodiversity conservation. Our country program uh, uh, currently is very much in line and, and trying to support uh, Malaysia's uh, five-year plan, uh, where our main partner is Economic Planning Unit. Uh, and and uh, and if you look into some of the issues, uh, uh, in uh, some of the uh, targets that we plan to achieve in our country program is very much in line with the uh, 11 Malaysia plan. Uh, in fact, uh, we've been uh, also supporting them, in supporting EPU in terms of the uh, uh, development of the 11 Malaysia plan uh, before it get embargoed uh, some years back. All right, that's, that's it. that is uh, on UNDP. All right, I'll now go into a much broader perspective. Uh, you know, but we, I think I don't, need, I don't need to explain further on climate change. Uh, I think it's 
pretty much uh, understandable. Um, in 2015, uh, uh, in 2015, um, uh, the, uh, there are two things going on which has been adopted by member states of the UN. One is the uh, Sustainable Development Goals uh, uh, in September to, uh, 2015, and the other one at the end of the year is the uh, agreement or the on, um, Paris Agreement eh? uh, uh, in Paris. So uh, uh, Malaysia as well has submitted its INDC uh, intended nationally determined contribution. So one of the um, uh, things that we dis um, been discussed uh, globally is about the climate change uh, issues. Uh, I think we all know uh, quite well that um, there are, when we talk about uh, uh, the climate challenge, uh, uh, there are always, uh, it is cumulative, uh, uh, it is actually irreversible, and today's problem actually, uh, tomorrow, uh, today's emission actually, to the, uh, tomorrow's problem, and it is actually a global problem. What we've been facing now actually has been uh, is, is due, has been uh, resulting from the industrial uh, uh, re revolution uh, um, uh, 100 years, uh, 150 years back. Eh? Uh, so, and, and, and when you talk about climate change, it is not just Malaysia's problem, it is actually a um, global problem. Yeah? Uh, um, so, yeah, so, each uh, member states has to look into uh, how we can collaborate together to ensure that the climate issues is being, uh, being uh, resolved uh, um, comprehensive, comprehensively. And uh, five tipping points when you talk about climate change, uh, it will, we will always see reduced agricultural productivity, which will lead to issues related to food security, or uh, some academicians say food insecurity, yeah, uh, whether uh, the productivity of those uh, lands will be affected, but some areas, uh, unfortunately, uh, the product productivity will be increased. Uh, heightened water insecurity because of the threat to the water catchment areas, uh, increased exposure to the extreme weather events, which we have seen from time to time, uh, the collapse of the ecosystem, and finally, the increased health risk due to the increase of the uh, waterborne as well as uh, airborne diseases. All right. Uh, so. You have seen this. Uh, you have seen this logo. Uh, so it was established uh, uh, in 2015. Sustainable Development Goals, uh, 17 goals, 165 uh, indicators. Uh, so a lot to be achieved by 2030. It is actually our future, future target. Uh, the, 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 the global community future target by 2030. Uh, right. Uh, I do not plan to really. Uh, read all the 17 targets, but uh, suffice for me to uh, state that there are uh, quite a number of uh, goals related to climate change. Uh, we're talking, uh, like for instance, uh, seven, affordable and clean energy, which I will explain later. Um, uh, and then uh, 12, uh, responsible consumption and production, uh, as, as you probably know how and also realize that how we should try to um, uh, encourage a recycling program and that kind of thing, a life cycle costing and that kind of thing. Sustainable cities and communities, you know, uh, there are lots of programs currently ongoing in UNDP. Uh, two weeks back in Malacca, UNIDO, uh, also World Bank has is also, uh, I mean, have aggressive program on sustainable cities. Uh, climate change, climate actions, SDG 13 is very much linked how the countries are um, um, trying to meet the uh, Paris Agreement, trying to meet the uh, NDCs, nationally determined contributions. Uh, and uh, last but not least on 17, partnership for goals. When you talk about partnership, it's not uh, in trying to achieve this 2030 agenda. It cannot be Malaysia alone. It have to work, we have to work together, the government, the private sectors, the uh, civil society organization. Engineers alone cannot resolve problem. We have to look into issues related with financing, with uh, business development, and, uh, and those people, the users, and yeah, the household users uh, especially. Uh, and finally, how uh, among in the international community, how can we uh, work together, part part partner together in, in resolving this, uh, this global problem? And climate change has actually interlinkages between those goals. Uh, climate change, if I mean, as I said just now, uh, because of those tipping points, 
uh, where it will lead to the uh, reduced agricultural productivity. Uh, it will also, uh, from climate change, SDG 13 has impact on SDG 2, uh, zero hunger, reduce productivity in terms of producing, produce, producing food, uh, will eventually affect SDG 1, uh, which is on poverty reduction uh, goals by 2030. Yeah? And not, not to also mention about the uh, effect of an having uh, uh, less healthy food, which leads to the uh, um, uh, SDG 3 on health as well as on uh, quality education. All right, uh, as you probably know, and you probably have read in the uh, biannual update report, BUR uh, report submitted by Malaysia to the UNFCCC. Uh, it's, not, it's not UNDP's report, it's not UN's report, it is actually Malaysia's report. So I would encourage you to go to UNFCCC and uh, download this BUR report. Malaysia is currently preparing the third national communication report to UNFCCC where it has an updated figure of greenhouse gas inventory. Uh, so you can, sh uh, uh, based on 2000, 2006 uh, IPCC guidelines, uh, we can, yeah, and then you can know uh, where are these sources coming, I coming from and how, how, how we can uh, tackle them. So as mentioned by the Honorable uh, Minister this morning, uh, as, well as, our, uh, as, as well as the uh, Director General of GKR, INDC 2015 uh, was submitted, 45% uh, by 2030, where 35% actually uh, on on unconditional basis, and 10% uh, will be on conditional basis. What it means is that 35% uh, will be done domestically, without any support from international community, without any financial support from uh, um, multilateral funding. Malaysia is able to uh, develop this uh, mitigation action. That is what it means. And uh, the 10% is actually uh, res uh, upon receiving uh, technology transfer as well as technical assistance as, and also financing from international communities and also developed countries. Yeah? So uh, some of the terms may be alien to, do, uh, alien to you. Uh, it is perfectly fine. So I would suggest that uh, treat this session as uh, as edu education, uh, you probably can Google this uh, later on. But here is uh, is good for me to just uh, give you a bit background before we go into further details uh, today. All right, uh, these are the data. Bit dry, you know. Bit boring, engineering stuff, you know. Uh, talking about uh, the key source analysis of uh, greenhouse gas emission for 2011, including the uh, land use, uh, uh, including land use data. So as you can see, uh, the energy energy um, uh, sector is pretty much covering almost like uh, seventy percent of the total gas, greenhouse gas emission in this country. Yeah? So energy, when you tackle energy sector in Malaysia, is pretty much we are tackling greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission uh, here here in Malaysia. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going a bit specific now on SDG 7. Okay, let me just share you again. Out of out of those 17 targets, SDG 7 is on energy. It refers to the uh, um, access to uh, um, modern energy, renewable energy, and efforts on energy efficiency. So one of the program under UN is actually on sustainable energy for all or such energy for our initiative. Uh, we have our own secretariat based at Vienna and uh, we do have a multi-agencies uh, um, um, uh, uh, team uh, looking into this issue. So three targets, uh, uh, first is on ensuring, ensuring universal access to modern energy services. Second is on doubling the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency. And third is on doubling the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix. So the first one actually, on when you talk about an universal, universal access to energy, what it's trying to say is that um, it is actually a right for every human to receive energy in their livelihood. Eh? Uh, so, uh, so basically, we're talking about, yeah, well, in, in layman's terms, we're talking about uh, trying to get 100% rural electrification and 100% uh, to receive uh, modern uh, fuel uh, energy in terms of uh, cooking, yeah? which 
in, in Malaysia, I don't think we really have a problem. Uh, uh, I, in, in my field visits in some of the places in Malaysia, like the Orang Asli places in Malaysia, uh, they use woods, they do use words, but the problem is they use, they, but they, they do have gas, yeah, they do have tongas to other, but they use woods is because woods is abundant in front of them, so might as well just use it and then they can save a little bit of money. So it's not about uh, accessibility, it's about, it's about, it's more like uh, trying to, uh, uh, it's more like uh, uh, saving uh, money as well as trying to use whatever resources available yeah, at their own place. Eh? Right. Okay. Uh, when it was set up, uh, we back in 2012. Uh, so the basis of uh, discussion is basically looking into uh, these uh, three, uh, uh, you know, these three uh, targets. This one universal access. Second is one uh, energy efficiency. One uh, sec uh, the last is on renewable energy. Uh, they are trying to move uh, from the current baseline of 83% uh, rural electrification rate to 100%. Uh, 59% on use of uh, primary reliance on non-solid fuels to 100%, and uh, for energy intensity, uh, that's where how uh, that's how they calculate the, the energy efficiency in terms of the global uh, figures, from minus 1.3 to minus 2.6, and finally on um, uh, renewable energy, 18% share of the energy mix to 36% of the energy share uh, of the global energy generation mix. Okay, that was the idea. All right. Then uh, last March, um, the global tracking framework of the sustainable energy uh, for all uh, was launched. Uh, so it basically states what is the progress of the uh, uh, SDG 7 as of now. So they are saying that in terms of energy efficiency, it is gaining momentum. Eh? The intensity of the final energy consumption in industry, agriculture, services, and transport is decreasing, uh, which is good. I'm not talking about globally, I'm talking about Malaysia. I, I'll give you Malaysia report card uh, after this. Uh, renewable energy, despite advances in technology and falling prices in the electricity sector, particularly on solar and wind, the gains in energy mix are a fraction of what uh, needed to meet global objective. Energy access, unfortunately, Still, one billion people still live without electricity, in Africa especially. And the number of people who still, who still use traditional solid fuel uh, rose slightly to three billion, uh, indicating that efforts to advance clean cooking are needed. So what now? We have what, seven billion people uh, globally. So nearly 40% uh, of the peop global population has yet uh, to receive clean fuel for cooking, so it's just uh, just so sad to look into, you know, to understand, you know, so uh, realize this figure. So, in essence, based on a projection uh, by 2030, it is highly unlikely that uh, those objectives will be met, uh, or even basis uh, uh, based on the policy commitments that we have, unless a drastic action is uh, is done, is organized now. All right. So these are just some of the uh, global, um, in terms of performance, uh, for access to electricity, uh, we are targeting 100%. Uh, 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 so based on IEA estimates by 2030, the, uh, based on the policy commitments by the member countries, it's only 91% is achievable. Uh, as of now, it's 85.3%. Okay? Access to clean fuels, uh, those are the figures. In general, those uh, the three uh, indicators indicates that we are not able to achieve by then. On energy efficiency, we are targeting on neg uh, negative 2.6%, uh, uh, and as of now, is we have reached negative 2.1%. Uh, for renewable energy, um, lots of talk has been ongoing globally. Uh, lots of uh, investment has been done, uh, especially by the developed countries, uh, China including. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, despite those uh, efforts, uh, uh, as, of, as, as of now, it's just uh, it's just 18.3% uh, uh, is achievable. All right. Okay. Uh, so these are just uh, looking into energy efficiency alone uh, at global globally. Uh, the green ones is basically they are on track. Uh, they will be able to achieve that by 2030. But for the uh, slightly green and red, 
especially based on the trend from 2012 to 2012 uh, to 2014, it shows that uh, the annual energy intensity has actually increasing. Uh, it's above zero percent. It's not negative percent. So uh, something that, uh, including Malaysia, as you can see there. So it's, it is uh, certainly energy efficiency in Malaysia is something that we can look into, and it is has really potential. Uh, that can be uh, improved further. Uh, in terms of sector basis, as you can see uh, right over there, all sectors pr pretty much see some improvements in terms of energy efficiency, except the yellow color one, which is the resi residential sectors. Uh, right? So I, I'm sure uh, the trend is pretty much similar in Malaysia. Okay. All right. Uh, these are actually a figures uh, which are uh, taken from the uh, RICE, uh, from the uh, 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 Regulatory Indicators on Sustainable Energy developed by uh, uh, World Bank. Okay. Um, and uh, we look into um, the three uh, targets, J just looking into regulator issues, because just too much issues, I, I don't, do not plan to really look into those those other sectors. I'm just looking to the regulatory indicators, how comparing with other countries, how can it best be done? So if we, if we look into these three sectors, I mean, sorry, the three targets, energy access Malaysia, okay, no problem. Okay. Renewable energy, we are pretty much on the right track. Yeah, I think and, um, I would not want to really dwell on that. But en on energy efficiency, is still, uh, still actually in yellow. Uh, a lot more can be done. And if you break up into those the indicators into sub-indicators, uh, planning-wise, it looks good. Uh, entities looks good. But uh, information, electricity usage, yellow. Uh, you know, so utilities, rate, financing mechanism, and also minimum energy performance standards, yellow. Uh, energy labeling, building codes, carbon pricing, all, uh, all rates. Eh? So those are actually something that Malaysia can focus on uh, in the coming years. Um, all right. Okay. When you talk about SDG, uh, if you are asking the government to to bond the cost alone, it is impossible. SDG requires achievement of SDGs requires uh, participation for all uh, from other sectors, including the private sectors. Uh, so, uh, in, when you talk about drivers and enablers for uh, asking uh, private sectors to be part of this, uh, we, we should also look into how uh, how the government policies uh, uh, can drive, you know, the uh, corporate sustainability, mobilizing uh, private sector finance, enhancing partnership, of course, uh, it's been, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, partnership between uh, private sectors, uh, the governments in, in many aspects. Uh, uh, supporting the small and medium and skilled industries, um, and finally uh, building trust uh, to enhance transparency and accountability. Because yeah, it is, if you look into today's news as well, so uh, this should not be used as green watching or blue watching private sector involvement. But it, it it is also an initiative for the private sectors to go uh, uh, to participate uh, uh, clearly on their efforts and, and by developing a clear transparency and accountability program for their side. All right, is it really business opportunity? Well, based on the uh, UN report, it, says it shows that 87% 80 of the CEOs believe that SDGs will provide a window of opportunity to rethink approaches to sustainable value creation. So uh, besides all the risks that they will face, there will always be an opportunity behind that, okay? And uh, the, the risk that they will see the coming uh, years probably uh, is uh, are actually climate change, poverty, and rising inequality, escalating conflict, and instability. Right. So uh, my conclusion: uh, um, it is very crucial that uh, what we the we, we and also the understanding that uh, whatever we do here in energy efficiency will eventually uh, be part of the climate change mitigation program from Malaysia. Will eventually meet the Paris Agreement and will eventually help Malaysia in achieving its SDGs. Uh, and also, uh, based on the global tracking framework data, it shows that unfortunately SDG 7 will not be achieved unless drastic, drastic action are undertaken. Uh, the third one is probably engaging all stakeholders is crucial, uh, government agencies, private sectors, financial institutions, CSOs, and also organizations. And finally, but not least, uh, is uh, 
Malaysia has vast potential to strengthen energy efficiency efforts, which, which I just shown just now. All right, uh, hope this will give you um, the global perspective before you go deeper today. Uh, thank you very much to the organizer. Thank you very much to JKR for implementing this project with, uh, with UNDP. Thank you.